So far in this chapter, we've seen two different ways of finding the area of a region. We've seen that you could use horizontal slices. That was in the last section, section 5.2. And we've seen vertical slices in section 5.1. So given a region, how do you pick between using vertical slicing and horizontal slicing? So really, when you have to pick, when I'm not forcing you to use one or the other, there are two things to consider when choosing. First, clue number one, the region is given as y is a function of x, then that would be vertical slicing. If the function is x equals a function of y, then that is the setup for horizontal slicing. And then clue number two is the shape of the region. In cases where you could actually isolate either x or y, the shape of the region might help you pick the one that would involve the least amount of work. So you could pick the way that results in fewer integrals. All right, so let's do an example where it isn't clear really which way to go. So example 5.3.1. I want to find the area of the following region R. So the only curve that I'm given that's not a straight line is y equals ln of x. I also have uh, y equals 1. I have y equals 0. And I have x equals 0. Um, let me label all the points. This is 1, 0. Um, this has y value 1. And so ln of x is 1 the x value would be e. All right, so if you look at clue number one, because of y equals ln of x, then it'd be easier to use vertical slicing. All right, but vertical slicing would require splitting the region up into these little vertical sticks. And if you notice, something happens here. When I look at the bottom, it switches from y equals 0 to y equals ln of x. So if I look at clue number 2 as well, so if I use vertical slicing, I would need two integrals, one for the part right here, and then I'd have to switch because bottom now follows the y equals ln of x curve. Now, if I used horizontal slicing, then I would draw my sticks this way, and I would need a single integral because for the entire region, this curve is on the right and this curve is on the left. All right, so we could use horizontal slicing. It seems to make sense because it would be only one integral. The extra work you'd have to do is you'd have to isolate x in this curve, right? But that's not hard. I can do it right now. This is the same as x equals e to the y, right? So let me show you both, right? It seems like both make sense. Um, I'm going to start. I think the easiest one here is horizontal slicing. So let me start with that. If I use horizontal slicing, um, I'm going to get an area, which is the integral from c to d, right minus left dy. So y is my variable. Um, the smallest value of y is 0, so from 0. The biggest value of y is 1, so to 1. And then right is e to the y for the whole region. And left is 0. 
And so I get the integral of e to the y, easiest integral there is, I get e to the y, so I get e to the 1 minus e to the 0, that's e minus 1. All right, not bad. Let's try using horizontal, uh, vertical slicing. If you chose to do vertical slicing, then um, let me remove my strips. I'll put them vertically now. So here, I have to split. Have to split because bottom changes, and then I can keep going. All right, so now if I use vertical slicing, it will be A to B top minus bottom dx. And so um, A is the smallest value of x, so that's 0. right? So here my variable is x. Uh, y is the biggest value of x, so it's E. And then top will be 1 but bottom changes. So I cannot write a formula for bottom until I split up my integral. So 0 to 1 of 1 minus 0. So 1 is the top, 0 is the bottom for that region. And then I have plus the integral from 1 to e. On this part of the region, Top is still 1, but bottom is now um, ln of x. All right, so the first part gives you just 1. Second part gives you e minus 2, but I will not compute it because, first of all, this integral is much harder than that one. You need integration by parts. Right, but you can see setting it up is slightly harder in the curse of vertical slicing because you have two different integrals to set up. Horizontal slicing, the difficulty is that you have to isolate x. So you can see how clue number one and clue number two plays off each other. For some region, it's obvious from the start, everything is given as x equals a function of y or everything is given as y equals a function of x and you cannot isolate the other variable. So you're stuck using one of the two methods. In the cases where you can switch from a curve that's defined as y isolated to one that's x equals a function of y, then you could actually do either.